Well, classic. I am uh, running late, like always. Uh, about 20 minutes late to the shop to meet the guys. I already got a call, they're not too happy. So that's just an absolute phenomenal start to the day. So I get a lot of questions kind of on what flies we're using, what techniques are we using, how are you catching these fish, yada, yada, yada. So today we're gonna kind of cover some of that. We're gonna go over like what flies we're using, how we're fishing them, how we're rigging it up, kind of the whole deal and like how that works. The laces. Get it all out? Yeah. Plan for today is I've never been here, but the water looks pretty good. And we're gonna try and uh, catch some trout on dry dropper rigs. So, uh, beautiful day. It's another day, another fish, you know? So today, I'm rigging up, again, one of these chubbies. It's a smaller one. Um, doing that because a lot of tree cover around, you know, there's gonna be a lot, you know, in my opinion, I think there'll be a lot of terrestrials and, you know, bigger bugs kind of coming off the banks out of the trees and stuff. And, you know, it's just a good all-around fly, um, simply because it's got presence on the water and the wild fish are aggressive and they want to come up to investigate. So then after that, I'm just going to put on a little skinny betis, uh, excuse me, a little skinny betis pattern. Um, that's just pretty much imitating anything in here right now. With a big old fat tungsten bead on the front of it, just so it gets it down in the real quick water. But nothing too special. See how that does for us. I'm fishing a barbless because it's kind of shallow and rocky. Um, so it's gonna ride upside down, just bump along those rocks, not get snagged too much. <clears throat> and it's better for the fish, you know, if you will. So this is a dry drop rig, 6x fluorocarbon. Already had one bite and duffed it, so it's obviously working. It's just some operator error. Oh yeah. Hey, you meant to do that. Hey, just keep trying. Yeah, that's big. Yeah, I'm gonna So far, I've been in the trees all day, but uh, I was just looking at the water, saw like a deep, you know, deep ur riffle. In my mind, the fish are gonna be sitting kind of on either side of that. Sometimes we'll be right in the middle, but you know, the first thing I always like to do is throw it in the soft water on, you know, both sides of the, of the quick stuff. Um, so those fish are gonna be kind of staged up looking for forage coming down and the fast water come out, you know, dart out and grab it. Um, and I just put my dry dropper right on the soft water where Shane's drifting right now and that fish just crushed this little, little jig. Oh my god. No. Did you just? Where'd it hit? It just snapped. Where'd it go? It's still on it. Oh, it's still. Did I break that? I don't even know what happened there. I, I was just going like this and it just snapped. Oh, were you Dude. trying to just pull it? I was just, I was barely. I think you hit that rock. No way. I hate that of... noise so much. I just heard that and I was like, huh. Unlucky. So, something that you'll notice on uh, these small streams uh, is a lot of times you'll get caught into making a lot of false casts, when in reality, you really only oh. need to do just a simple roll cast. There's a lot of cover around us, which makes for a good good place to use a roll cast. You know, if you're just doing a roll cast, you, your flies gonna be in the water more. Uh, and longer, and you're gonna have a better opportunity to catch a fish. And then also, you're gonna get caught in less trees. So that's just something to note uh, when you're fishing these little these little wild streams. Breaking in at yours. Miss him. Please. Make a good one. Oh, that is a nice one. Oh. Yep. We put a cast up right here on the right side, right on the little dead stuff where it's kind of the soft water. Put it right there, and it wasn't really moving, and. He came up and slammed the little chubby. Did he slam bam it? Slam bam. Move, person. Not bad. Oh my god, f you dude.
Yeah, three for him. Dale. Oh, he's dead ass. That's a snake. Yo, that's snake skin. <laughs> Dude, we're gonna get poison ivy or something. Good thing Carson has chakas on. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to another uh, Wildfly Productions put on by Dude South Outfitters. Um, Dude South. Here we have Shane Hines trying his hardest at some uh, native Appalachian strands brook trout. He is so far 0 for 2, hooked one on the dry fly about, lifted it a foot out of the water, and then he this. just missed another one on the dry fly. It's a grind out here today folks, water's hot, water's low, temperature's hot, but we're still trying. So we had to end the day early the other day. Um, Shane had to make his way back to Charlotte. <clears throat> but, oh dude, my alarm's going off. Oops. Class, nope, don't have class today. So yeah, we had to end the day early, uh, but Carson and I came back out. We wanted to finish this video for you guys. Um, I actually went to Instagram, asked you guys a bunch of questions, or asked you guys um, to ask me some questions <clears throat> about small stream techniques and whatnot. So we're going to try to cover some of those today. Uh, I don't think we're going to cover everything just in this one video, but we're going to do what we can. Kind of give you guys some tips here and there and um, just some things to look out for when you're on the river and like how we're rigging, uh, what we're using, yada, yada, yada. But anyways, we're going to see what we can do today and uh, hope to give you guys some uh, valuable tips. So uh, today, guys, we are out on just a, you know, small local creek in the high country, um, you know, disclosed location but nothing real special to it. Today, like we've been doing in the past videos and clips and whatnot, just gonna be fishing a dry dropper rig. And I mean, the rig that I've got on today is as simple as it gets. And I mean, it catches fish. All it is, is this is just a big stimulator. It's got some rubber legs on it. You know, you can cut them off, leave them on, doesn't really matter. And I've pre-treated that with Flyagra, which is just a um, hydrophobic solution. It's a floatant that uh, is gonna help that dry fly stay up <coughs> throughout the day. But um, down from that, I've got some 6X fluorocarbon tippet. Um, and I'm fishing fluorocarbon because the water is so, so low and clear today um, that, you know, you could get away with some, you know, monofilament or power flex, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to err on the side of fluoro. So with that being said, I've got about, I'd say 20, 22 to 23 inches of uh, fluoro um, down to a super classic fly. It's literally just a Frenchie the gold bead. Um, I'm fishing on jig hook today and it's barbless because um, I just want that Frenchie to kind of just bounce on the bottom. The jig hook, as you can see, it's going to ride upside down and so you're going to not get snagged as much in the fish, especially the um, really aggressive wild rainbows. You're going to key in on that, you know, just kind of bounce it through the fast water. It's pretty much all there is to it. Um, one more thing though, what I'd like to say is in the high country right now, the water is incredibly, incredibly low fish just rose down there and so with that being said the one thing 6x fluorocarbon is way to go for me also um, I'm fishing really natural flies I'm not gonna fish a really big foam fly I like to fish that when there's you know more water moving through the creek so I'm just gonna fish this stimulator it's gonna have a really small presence when it lands on the water um, and not spook any of the fish because the water's so low and clear so um, literally this is the rig we're gonna be fishing all day nothing to it let's get after it So guys, just caught a uh, pretty nice wild rainbow just right off the other side of this rock here. It's just big old rock in the middle of the hole, um, and the first that was the first thing I saw when I walked up to this spot. Um, I expected the fish to be sitting on the upstream side of that rock simply because he's got 
a current coming down on his left side and on his right side. Um, typically, the fish will sit behind the rock in the eddy, but he was actually on the upstream side of it, and that's exactly where I th thought he'd be because he's looking at both those currents, you know, looking for little bugs and forage to come by him. Um, and so I just threw a dry dropper rig right up on top of him, um, just about four or five feet upstream of that rock where I, you know, predicted he's been sitting and he came up and ate the dry fly. Um, so just a classic, classic representation of how these fish are going to be sitting. I'm um, just right in the soft seam in between these two currents. That's sick. Look at this other fish chasing my drop line. Big old rainbow. Look at him right here. Look at him. See him right there. He's all over him. Look at him. Right on that log. Frenchy. All right, guys. Um, just like I talked about earlier, fishing one of the app, like the simplest rigs that you can put together anywhere. I've already caught a fish on the stimulator, and just caught a fish on that little Frenchie. Um, it's a great fly. It's classic. It's got a big, big old tungsten bead on the front, so it's going to get directly down in that fast water. Um, and the little rainbows, man, they just tear them up. So it's a killer, killer pattern. Don't sleep on it. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, buddy. Fired up. Yeah, dog. Did I call it? Not lying to you guys. Rig works. Don't know how to release fish. All right. All right guys, so just caught a nice rainbow again right off this run here. Um, and I made a little bit of a fly change. I lost one of my only Frenchies in a tree. So now I was forced to switch up and I just put on um, one of my favorite patterns. It's called Skinny Betas. Um, it's the best imitation I can make. Literally all it is is a jig fly with a, um, I think 2.8 millimeter black nickel bead for you fly tires. You know, just black body with wire, cocktail on tail and black dubbing. I mean, it's super, super simple fly. And it, I mean, this is, my favorite fly right now for local streams. You know, I put this fly on because you can kind of see the bottom um, of these runs where fishing here have got more rocky, um, bigger chunk rock and whatnot, and therefore that's gonna allow for more, you know, bigger stone flies and bigger mayflies and bugs to just be all over the place coming through this fast water. And so for me, when I see a real rocky bottom, you know, more than your kind of pebbly sandy bottom, I'm gonna put on a darker fly, you know, a darker jig that's heavier and is gonna imitate, you know, bigger stone flies and whatnot. You know, you could throw a Pat's rubber leg, um, you know, technical stone fly patterns, stuff like that. But for me, when I see big rocks, like I said, big rocks means big, dark black flies for me. There you go, there you go. Bud Ruckers. You sure it's on sucker? I promise you, good job. Inhaled the Frenchie. Okay. So, really nice little wild rainbow. Beautiful fish. Um, but, seems to be that there's like a 15 to 16 inch brown right under this tree. The rhododendron of doom. And uh, it's a real tricky cast, and I've gotten a couple good drifts on him. I'm gonna try and get him to eat because he's a super nice fish. And he's holding, he hasn't spooked yet, so I keep pulling fish off of him, not the one I want, of course. <laughs> but we're gonna try and get it to eat. Got him. Got him. Got him. Big, 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 big. Oh, it's nice, dude. Oh, it's nice. <laughs> It's a sucker, isn't it? <laughs> it's a big old sucker! Oh my god. God, dude. <laughs> That's one ugly son of a bitch, though. That's one native brown trout right there, folks.
Ew. Native. Big native. Dude. Dude. I hooked that thing and it started digging. I thought that was just a fat brown. Today, uh, the name of the game was was quick water. Um, I fished this stretch a little while ago and the fish are just all through it. Um, but today it kind of seemed like the fish, you know, especially the rainbows, had moved up into the riffles a lot. And with that being said, why they've done that is the water is so low um, and so low and clear. They can't really sit in the tail outs of the hole I'm looking for forage. They can't really, at this point, get too much oxygen because if you think about it, the water's not moving that fast. So they're going to tuck themselves up, you know, in the rocks and the ledges and stuff right in that quick water. And they're doing that because one, the water's quicker and they're sitting in there and they're just eating food all day. All those bugs that are coming off the rocks in the quick, quick water, um, they're going to eat. So, you know, from the clips earlier today, you notice that we're fishing the very top of a hole, very top of a roof hole, throwing it in and high sticking it. And we're doing that because we're trying to keep all that line out of the water, you know, all the line out of the water, all the way up to our dry fly, um, high sticking it so that line isn't on the water pulling your flies down because you're fishing, you know, you're fishing the fastest part of the run. And, and if you just throw it in there and drop your rod, you know, the water, the current's gonna pull that line and turn, pull those flies, you're not gonna get a natural drift. Nine times out of 10, you're not gonna catch fish. So you're flipping those flies into any kind of soft seam, eddy, you know, look for rocks, fish behind them, fish in front of them, fish to the sides of them. Um, and that's where those fish are gonna be sitting this time of year. And that's, I mean, that's all around the county, um, all these different streams that I've fished. So that being said, um, you know, you're just rolling it in, high sticking it in the fastest water, keeping that dry dropper, keeping those flies in there as long as possible. Um, and I like to say, anticipate that strike. And some Something, something today is do not set the hook too hard. A um, couple times we pulled some fish off because he set it too hard. You know, these little guys, they're in and around the ranges of 5 to 12 inches is a big fish. All you got to do is throw your cast in there. You know, you get a bite, whether it be on the dry fly or on the dropper, just lift the rod. Um, and that's it. And then they'll give you a good fight on a small rod. That's pretty much the name of the game today. Uh, caught more fish on the dropper today. Like I said, I was fishing just a small Frenchie, little buggy looking fly. You can fish midges, Frenchies, a um, bunch of different jig patterns, you know, holy grails, hare's ears. You know, I've done really good on small print stems, little black print stems that are imitating just stone flies and stuff in the creek. Um, so basically, it doesn't exactly matter what flies you're fishing. It's, it's going to be fishing the hole correctly fishing the run correctly. So if you've got, you know, as long as you're not fishing a squirmy and a mop, you know, you're gonna catch some fish if you're fishing it right. So make sure to fish the top of the riffles this time of year, you know, before you get some rain, which ironically it's starting. Um, <laughs> and if you fish those holes correctly, it doesn't matter too much what flies you have on as long as you're getting a good drift. So pay attention to the little tips and stuff that we're giving you. So uh, thanks so much for watching guys and uh, catch you next week. Dude South Outfitters, boy. Yeah. <laughs> My dry got sucked under the water and I was pulling it back to me and he just ate it like a streamer. <laughs> Funny. Native. Big old native Grand Slam brook trout today. <laughs> and you're a long ways from home, buddy. He uh, probably thinks that he has to spawn, but joke's on him. He can't. <laughs>